out of the roughly 500 Fortune 500 companies, zero of the CEOs will be supporting Donald Trump. Zero out of 500 that we are aware of. Not 10, not five, but zero. The uh, CEO of the Chief Executive Leadership Institute, Jeffrey Sonnenfeld, was on CNBC a couple of days ago, and he talked about this. Now, before you react and you say, David, what do I care about 500 rich, mostly dudes? Why do I care whether they are supporting Donald Trump? This is all about the elites. I disagree with that. And I'm going to explain it in a moment. But first, let's hear what Jeffrey Sonnenfeld had to say. If we look back into the data and we're looking at this now for the last four months. We've been pointing out that there are no Fortune 500 CEOs uh, who are supporting uh, uh, former President Trump. And that is a historic break going back to uh, to, uh, you know, William Howard Taft and through uh, uh, Calvin Coolidge and Ronald Reagan and the, and the Bushes and everything is that it's, it's been anywhere from 40 to 60 percent public and financial support. It's zero now. And it was a zero Jeffrey. in 2016. And the Trump economic package frightens them. It's ex extremely inflationary. The tariffs, 10 percent across the board uh, on all imports, that's just crazy. It leads to a, a 3 percent uh, increase for sure in inflation and plunging the GDP. Uh, right. And then he, and that's before retaliatory gestures, the increase in the deficit. He wants to cut uh, $5 trillion of taxes with no commensurate cut in expenditures. Uh, so these, these are problems. He doesn't believe in the Jeffrey, independence what of do the you say? What do you say to the CEOs? There's a lot of CEOs who are watching us now, probably watching you speaking, saying, but you know what? I don't like uh, the Biden administration when it comes to the, the, the regulatory regime right now. I worry about uh, the tax policy and what's going to happen uh, if the tax, if the Trump uh, t uh, uh, taxes roll off in 2025 and what that debate looks like. I mean, there are there are folks, as you said, 70 percent of the uh, of the CEO community, Republicans. Do they turn out to be reluctant Biden voters? Do they not vote at all? I mean, what where where do you think they land? They'll be re reluctant Biden voters. They don't. All right. So listen, it's easy to say. 500 rich dudes, who cares? That's not for the people. What economic policy is good for the average person is not dictated by whether the CEOs of the 500 biggest companies in the country are voting for Biden or voting for Trump or whatever the case may be. But I would push back against that for a couple of different reasons. Number one, uh, we know about this meeting with CEOs a couple of weeks ago where CEOs left the meeting saying Trump was completely incoherent. He couldn't stick to a topic. He didn't make any sense. Something seems wrong with the guy's brain. And they seem now to be uh, saying we are going to vote in accordance with that, which is we will reluctantly vote Biden, even if we don't love everything he's doing uh, for right or wrong reasons. We'll talk about that uh, because Trump is completely incoherent. But there's a bigger story here. Um, despite the fact that, yes, these are 500 rich, mostly uh, rich, mostly dudes who cares what they think about Trump's policy or whatever, it would be good for them, not for the average employee. It's important to understand that really CEOs tend to support policies that predict a stable economic environment and the assumption of likely uh, growth. When you see not a single Fortune 500 CEO back Donald Trump, it suggests that they see Trump as a chaos agent. They see a Trump economy as unpredictable. They aren't confident that the leadership, to the extent there will be any leadership, will actually be a stabilizing force for the economy. And an unstable economy is bad for everybody. It's certainly bad for workers. CEOs clearly perceive Trump's economic policy package, to the extent Trump even knows what it is, as an unpredictable or inconsistent plan, which can be very problematic for any business that wants to make plans about investment and strategy going forward several years. CEOs support uh, that which will bring investor confidence. And to some degree, CEOs must be looking at Trump and saying, I think if Trump wins, investors won't be confident in our business for whatever reason. But that's what they end up thinking. And therefore, they recognize Trump's probably not good for our business overall. The economic direction will probably not be, be uh, 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 negative. The market stability will be reduced. And we know that historically 
the data bears out a very clear case, which is you tend to see higher job creation under Democratic presidents, higher GDP growth, lower unemployment, better stock market performance. It's just the facts. Now you can say, I don't care about that. I think I would be someone, despite what you're telling me, David, that in general, those metrics perform better under Democratic presidents. I think it would be better for me personally to have a Republican president. OK, if you're honest about that, then now we have something to talk about. But the facts are the fact and you can go back and no matter how you slice and dice it, even applying, which I don't think makes any sense, a, a, a sort of uh, a delay where you say, well, I'm going to count it starting three months after a new president and see what that does to the numbers. It's still better on all of these metrics when you have a Democratic president. So it's very easy and maybe tempting to say what is good for 500 of the CEOs of the biggest companies doesn't tell us anything about what's good for the country. But in fact, CEOs of these big corporations tend to understand that much of their success actually isn't about the specifics of what they're doing, but it's about broader market and global realities. And that is a much bigger story that can be told. And all of them are saying Trump is not the guy for us. So certainly uh, undercuts the idea um, that Republicans are better for the business environment. You might generically hear from Republican voters who have no business. They aren't entrepreneurs. They you know, they're, they're, they're just employees somewhere. They might say, oh, Republicans are better for business. Well, the facts don't bear that out. And the CEOs actually, depending on the better business environment, are all saying we're not voting Trump. And what we might end up doing is actually voting for Biden. Reluctantly or not, they're saying it's the better choice for a business environment. Definitely something to think about. Also, I want to mention to you the Project 2025 white paper is now available. We have put together a multi page. I believe it is one of the clearest and most concise explanations of what is Project 2025, what are the risks, and what do we do about it. If you want to learn more about it, if you want to give the white paper to someone so they can understand the risks, this is completely free. I'm selling you nothing other than a good time, a depressing good time. The, pa the, the white paper is a little depressing. Go to davidpackman.com slash project 2025. It is free. We put it together. We paid a designer to lay it out as a nice PDF. It's all out of our own pocket, okay? Because this is so critically important. davidpackman.com slash project 2025. Download it. Send it to your friends. Send it to your kids. Let's make sure people know about it.